Hello everybody, my name is Chris Murphy. I handle evangelism within Australia, New Zealand and Southeast Asia. Um, just a little bit of a warning, in my head right now it's close to 5 a.m. So uh, if I seem a little off at the moment, it's because I'm running on pure caffeine. <laughs> so um, today I'm going to be running you through the, uh, the gameplay instructor guides that I put together. And uh, before I go into it as well, I'd actually like to give a shout out to Chad Mulroney in the front here, who helped me assemble and polish this up quite a bit. Um, yeah, this, this has been a pretty big undertaking to get it all together. Now, when it comes to uh, these guides, I Lewis once. Uh, told me that when it comes to teaching Unreal Engine, we kind of treat it like a blender, in that we show people how to use the tool, but we never really show people how to kind of how to actually make a recipe. You know what I mean? And when it comes to Unreal Engine itself, I guess it's more like the kitchen. And if you think about making a game, you're you're kind of thinking about these art assets and code assets as the ingredients that are kind of coming into that kitchen. Now, this was our first time, I guess, in kind of putting some guides together that were really teaching people how to cook rather than how to just use the kitchen itself. So for this, it was really, really important uh, that <coughs> essentially we were looking at creating an intro to game development and using Unreal Engine as the context. Now because of that, it means that we're, uh, for quite a lot of the lessons, we actually focus on doing things in a semi-engine agnostic way. You know, when you're discussing game design principles, it's actually better to start with just discussing a game of tag and then moving into saying, well, hang on, this is what happens. <coughs> in real life, this is how a regular game works, and here it is within a video game. So kind of adjusting between those two contexts. So where possible, we're focusing, you know, uh, away from the tool, but also, it's an Unreal Engine Education Summit, uh, so the tools are a pretty big part as well. Uh, so we kind of flip between those two, and it's a general lessons, and they kind of pair <laughs> those two together, kind of explain how things work. Now the general approach here was for us to kind of put something together that Initially, we were pitching uh, to students uh, certain projects. So the first couple of lectures really focused on kind of setting out general projects that they could be pursuing, and then the lectures themselves are kind of bolstering their skill sets and uh, letting people know what they could be doing within certain areas. So each lecture is focusing on a different part of introduction to game development. Um, and it was really important to me that we kind of provided a nice framework for students to work within teams, because I can't stress enough that the, the, the strongest uh, learning experiences I've ever had have always been actually developing something, not just completing exercises. So it was really important to me that we had both sample content so students could see how things would go together, but also project ideas that I knew were achievable for initial people kind of coming into it. So this uh, this was really something that you know pushed heavily in the development of this. Now each lecture, uh, as Tom explained, uh, contains presentation files. We've got lecture and class notes that you can use for delivery. Uh, we also have sample questions and activities for running tutorial sessions. And finally, where appropriate, we have certain files that you can access and open up and use as examples for the lectures. So I'll start running you through some of those lectures that we have. Uh, the first one is, is game design. Now, game design covers a couple of things. Uh, we have game design context discussion and comparison. So within this, we're kind of looking at things like tag and, you know, as I mentioned before, how that you can then abstract that and look at it in video games. Uh, we have a playable sample for analysis that we put together, which I'll show you in just a moment. Uh, we kind of discuss play and motivations, what drives people for staying within games, and you know what kind of uh, things keep people experiencing a game loop. So what kind of keeps them coming back again and again and again. So just general motivators. Uh, and finally, we actually also do a, uh, a bit of a dive into common documentation types. Now, uh, documentation types may sound like a pretty boring subject, but we all know within game development that sometimes you actually need to go through and actually write everything up. So this is kind of covering all your feature, matrix, uh, feature matrixes, your game design documents, your pitch documents, and how those things differ to one another, and giving you kind of examples of these things. Now, one of the samples that we threw together, this is an earlier uh, prototype version of it, so it'll look a little bit different, was just a kind of a, a, a retro style uh, shooter. So if you've ever played a game like Raptor, Call of the Shadows, or anything like that, it's, uh, or Galaga, it's that kind of a general thing. Uh, but for me, that was a very simple thing that students could go into and easily extend upon. 
So they could test uh, very basic game design concepts, like how you know what would happen if I added new weapons to it, new power-ups, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, within an existing framework that they wouldn't have to worry too much about breaking. Now, uh, for the uh, next section, we then cover an introduction to game engines in general. So we start discussing uh, the broad strokes uh, of what game engines themselves do, what's kind of done outside of engines, and how that information then flows back into it. And of course, in this uh, section, we then go through a general overview of the features that Unreal Engine's offering so students can start getting an early idea of what things they can potentially make use of in developing content. Now, we then cover gameplay scripting. So this is an introduction to gameplay scripting. We kind of go through the basics of how it works, how Blueprint uh, ties everything together within the engine, and how people can kind of start using this to assemble their own projects and assemble their own actors. Now, we covered quite a few things within here. Uh, most importantly, though, we really dive into the gameplay framework. So we start looking at how things are tied together as far as um, how a, a pawn class and how a, a game mode class, etc., etc., how they all kind of flow together to create something. So students have a better idea of the structure from which they would be building on top of. It's, it's quite common that when people are kind of going into Blueprint, they're like, here's how to make a time of day actor, or here's how to make a car, and that's great. But as educators, you all know how incredibly important it is that we actually set people up with a framework that they're actually building things on top of. Because they can build their cars and whatever else they, if they want, but if two months, three months from now, they're developing a team project and they suddenly realize they haven't been building upon the framework properly, they're going to start running into issues when they try and do more than the basic prototyping elements. <coughs> and of course, we go through these uh, framework elements and we map them back to that bird of prey example that I showed you just a moment ago. Now, next up we have a level design uh, discussion. So, this kind of goes into uh, the basics of, of level design, uh, certain concepts <coughs> behind it. Uh, we go into things like white rooms, and we cover elements such as open world uh, design versus traditional linear level design, and how those things differ within development. So, it's whether you're priming people for potential experiences, or whether you're setting up explicit monster closets, that kind of stuff. And uh, this had a couple of extra things we put in there. Uh, most notably, we um, we put together a, a basic case study on Gears of War. So we're looking at how Gears of War as a game was structured and then how the levels were made to kind of play off of certain gameplay elements within Gears. This could give people that were learning level design a clear, concrete example of what was put together, how it was made to be played, and how simple, tiny twists in level design uh, you know, ensure that the game would be played in a certain way, or ensure that a level would be memorable. So we cover things like fuzzy cover, level flow, gimmicks and books, general approach. Uh, for this as well, I put together another sample uh, that is super uh, clear-cut uh, stealth game. So the idea of this was you're just collecting a couple of things and then getting to an exit within the environment while there's some AI that are snooping around. Uh, I did this because I wanted to create a uh, an environment in which students could focus on level design without looking at the aesthetics at all. We just kind of have this digital Tron-esque kind of environment going on, and they could just throw together the, the space and get it from kind of a, a, like a ludic space sense rather than approaching it from, hey, I really want to make sure I have a waterfall, because when you're doing design, your waterfalls are relevant. Think about it later. Do you know what I mean? So uh, putting together this sample was quite an important thing. Uh, next up, we go through the content pipelines. So with regards to the content pipelines, again, we're kind of showing how content moves into the engine. If you're an artist, where things start, where things end, um, and how certain things like materials are kind of like binding different types of textures together. Uh, so this was, a, again, a really important thing for people when they're getting into it to really know how these steps all kind of come together. We also did a, uh, a section that was discussing AI in games. So we explained AI and common concepts, such as how the AI can actually cheat. And then we go into concepts such as pathfinding and behavior trees, and we delve into how all of these things are bound together, and how an AI can seem intelligent, but in reality is following basic instructions that have been set up. Uh, it was really important to me that we covered developing as a team. As I mentioned before, we're really going into these team roles, so you know we're looking at students developing projects together. So for me, it was really important that we covered things like what is source control, uh, project management, uh, and this actually flowed into another thing that I thought was a really important thing to cover, which was elements such as the truck factor within game development. 
and also uh, burnout and crunch and how to avoid burnout and crunch and why that's kind of important. Uh, because we were doing an, an intro to game design course and we're kind of getting students to work together, I thought it was quite important that we still kind of focus on some of these other things that can sometimes be considered side issues but are actually really, really important when teams are working together uh, for people to kind of approach uh, and discuss with people as to how we can kind of rectify these situations. Uh, we do a dive into optimization and debugging, so we discuss things like how planning your project ahead and certain elements can uh, ensure that you're kind of optimizing ahead of time. Uh, and of course, how to use the profiler and debugging tools, so this way when students do run into issues, hopefully we can get past them. A quick dive into UI development, so within this we look at the general user interface types, uh, setting up UMG wids uh, widgets uh, and custom animations and such within. Uh, we look at this from the context of like, how UI and user experience is typically uh, structured, so you know whether you want widgets in the world, whether you want them on screen, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Uh, and we kind of dive into that. Uh, we did a, uh, a quick thing on uh, native programming. So this is not a intro to C++ uh, lecture. This lecture is more focusing on the basics of uh, of if you are already a programmer, here's how to get into uh, your um, Here's how to get C++ working within UE4. Uh, from here, we, uh, I'm running out of time, so I'm going to uh, just kind of skip through a little bit of this. Uh, we have shipping and releasing, so we look at what you need to do to distribute and patch your project. We have a game marketing crash course, so this is kind of going into just getting your project out there. I thought this was important because if students finish their projects and they actually want to get it out into the wide world, it's good to have a couple of lessons that are focusing on what to do from there. Now, these guides uh, are all going to be available for free uh, once they launch. I think the aim at the moment is April 1st. Uh, and you can uh, access that from the uh, So just look at the education section and you'll see it there. Uh, next up we have Short, who's going to be kind of, uh, he's going to be doing, uh, talking about his deep dive masterclasses. So, take it away, Short.